Star Schema and Data Modeling in Power BI. In this video, let's understand how these two things work and how to set up a data model within Power BI. We'll start with the concept understanding first and then we'll switch over to Power BI so that I can show you how to set up a data model with Star Schema within Power BI. For the purpose of this example, I'm going to use the Awesome Chocolates company. Awesome Chocolates sells chocolates, as the name suggests, and your job as a business analyst is to analyze their sales data. So you're given four different tables of data. The biggest or the main table is our sales data table. So here is a sample of the sales data table with the first 10 rows printed out for you. As you can see here, we got a salesperson name, for example, Barfani, operating within New Zealand, selling raspberry choco on 1st of January, 2021 for $8,414 and then some more details. But if I want to know a little bit more about any of these things, for example, what team does Barfony operate in or what sort of product Raspberry Choco is, we are not able to answer those questions from this table alone. So this is where the other tables come in. Here is my salesperson table. This tells me the story from the perspective of salesperson. So for example, if I read the name Barfony here, follow it up there, I can see that he is in the yummy steam. Likewise, we have got a products table that tells me what's happening at a product level. So Raspberry Choco is a bars product, large size, $4.09 per box cost. Finally, we also have a geography table that tells me New Zealand is in the APAC region. So this is how typically the data is structured in many data analysis situations. And this type of a structure will lead us to the star schema. You could imagine that, you know, there are some threads connecting all these different tables. So for example, the salesperson column here, if I want to know more about this column, I would go to this table and then use up this column on that column and then get the details. So if there is a thread that is connecting this and that, like this, a thread, that is one type of a connection. Same way, we could also have a connection on the geography level. We'll move it here. And finally, at the product level as well. So when you have these four tables linked up like this, essentially what we have done is create a star schema. Star schema refers to the concept of having a central concept. So for example, here my central table is my sales table and then many outer concepts. So here I have geography, salesperson, and then the product table. So when you have a setup like this, where there is a central concept and multiple outer concepts, this whole connection mechanism is called star schema. The reason for this name is it looks like a star with one central concept and multiple outer things. Hence the name star schema. Another common name that you hear in the business world is a snowflake schema. A quick example for that would be, imagine you have individual sales targets for some of the salespeople available in a separate table, sales targets. And then this sales targets table is linked to the salesperson table on the same salesperson column. And this is where a snowflake schema is coming, come, coming up. This is because we start with the star and then some of these outer concepts themselves are stars on their own hence the name Snowflake. For the purpose of this discussion, let's deal with star schema. So this is how it looks. Within the star schema, we use some special names for each of these types of tables. The central concept table is called as fact table because this is where all the facts and numbers are maintained. And these outer tables are called dimension tables because they tell the story from one dimension at a time. This table tells me the story of salesperson this table tells me the story of geography and this one tells me the story of my products. If you observe the nature of these connections itself, a person like Barfoni might appear several times in this table. In fact, he does here and here. But within this dimension table, there is only one Barfoni. So this nature of relationship is here many to one. A item can appear multiple times here 
but it will only appear once there. Same with this one, you can see that New Zealand has appeared several times, but it will only have one New Zealand. Same with product, each product will only appear once here, but they can repeat many times within the sales details. So this is a many to one relationship. Another common thing that you observe within the companies when you are analyzing your own data is, normally you won't have like full names or items here. You will usually have an ID number here, like a salesperson ID or a product ID. And then when you take the ID and go here, you will have an ID column and then the details will follow along. Within Awesome Chocolates, we are a bit casual about these things. So we kind of maintain the data like this. So now that we understood the say the star schema concept and many to one relationships, etc. Let's go to Power BI, load up this data and then set up the data model. We open up Power BI and then use the get data button to bring the data. In case of this awesome chocolates company data, it is all maintained in a spreadsheet. So I'm going to use the Excel workbook button and then point to the location where my data is. This will open up the spreadsheet that contains the data and then gives me the navigator screen through which I can select which tables I want. I need all these four tables. I'm just going to select everything and then straight away load this data. Normally within a data modeling setup, you may want to go through a little bit of transformation or cleanup process as well. But in this case, the data is pretty clean. Once the data is loaded, we will go to the model view and within here, we can now set up the relationships. Notice that Power BI has automatically connected some of the tables, but not everything. This is because if the column names match and the contents kind of match, then Power BI will go ahead and link them up. Let's observe this relationship here. It says product column in the products table is linked up to the sales table product column. You can see the details of relationships when you point your cursor on the line. This line is nothing but the thread that we used in our illustration earlier. You can also see the one to many nature of this relationship. One here and many here. Many is denoted with star. So that's that. What about this little arrow? This arrow indicates the filter direction. It means if you filter the product data, then the sales data will also be filtered because the arrow is going from products to sales table. I'll explain more about this later on. But now we can see that two of our tables are connected, but not the location. This is because within the locations table, the column name is called geo and here it is called geography. So Power BI did not automatically link this up, but we can make the connection. To make the connection, you just want to select the column, click and drag this column onto the geography column here. So this is how the connection is made. Click, drag and drop it on the geography column. A one to many connection will be created and our star schema is built. You can see that in this case, we have the central concept and three dimension tables here on the side. If you kind of put it on this side and put this one in the middle, you have a little star here right there. Congratulations. You've just set up your very first star schema in Power BI. If you want to learn a little bit more about how to analyze the data now that you have modeled it, check out the video that is shown on the screen. I'll catch you there. Bye-bye.